measuring acceleration, right? I get this question a lot. Um, besides what is acceleration? How do we measure it? So I think it's important to understand what creates an effective acceleration. So, you know, everyone's heard of, of forces and everyone's heard about putting force in the ground. So putting force in the ground in the right direction at the right time is, is what creates the best acceleration. Um, if you look at forces, you're really, really looking at mass times acceleration. So the mass of the athlete times acceleration rate. Within this force side of things, we have two ground reaction forces. So we have a resultant force, which is total force, uh, total net force of both horizontal and vertical forces. So I think vertical is, is, is straight down. Horizontal is what pushes us forward, creates projection. The ratio between these forces we call ratio of force. And this is measured through force velocity profiling, which I'll go through in a second. At the beginning of a sprint, ratio of force is higher than towards the end. So it's at the highest in the beginning. Towards max velocity, the ratio is primarily vertical. So essentially what this means is my acceleration rate is determined by the ratio, how much horizontal force that I have. So it starts off very high as my acceleration rate is high. And as that acceleration rate drops off, it becomes more and more uh, vertical throughout the end. So if you look at the end of a, of a sprint, at the highest velocity, you're looking at vertical forces and vertical force demand. There's been a lot of articles, I would say probably early 2000s, that talked about vertical force demands and creating force numbers and trap bar deadlifts and things like that. Um, and, and, and those aren't wrong. But what we're looking at here is the percentage of, of horizontal force in each step in the sprint. So when I look at um, step one, athlete reaches 3.93 miles per hour. This is just this is the athlete on the left, Carlin Isles, you see the vertical and horizontal. You see 15% of velocity is achieved in this first step. And his ratio of force percentage is 56% horizontal, so very high horizontal. You see step two, 52, and step three, it's 48 and 45. So the argument is that, well, there's more vertical force after step two. But really the argument should be is how much horizontal is still left over after these first two steps. So if you go down to the bottom graphic, um, you see the velocity curve. That's has a circles. So that's the model velocity. And then you see the horizontal component is the gray. And you see it high in the beginning. And you see it start to drop off. You see the vertical climb. So if the horizontal drops off too early, the athlete reaches a high velocity early. And it's probably not their peak potential. So what you want to have for each athlete is you want to have a high beginning horizontal you want to see it gradually drop off over time. If it drops off immediately and the athlete reaches a peak velocity too soon, it's not their true peak. So if you don't have, if you have a question on that at the end, we'll just we'll talk about it. But essentially what this is saying is that when we're looking at an athlete accelerating the top speed, we're looking at a horizontal component. We still want to know that horizontal component, even as the velocity increases. So their acceleration rate as the velocity. Looking at an athlete, and, and understanding like that this is a truth. How do we individualize their approach? Because obviously every athlete's gonna have a little bit of a different signature. So this is where force velocity profiling comes in. <clears throat> I'm not gonna spend too much time on what force velocity profiling is right now because uh, JB Marin has a ton of free resources and webinars and everything on that. So if you wanna get brushed up on it, I suggest go looking up JB Marin at the bottom right corner. Um, there's three ways you can get this. GPS uh, is one way. Laser is one way. My Sprint is, a, is an app. It's like $2.99, super cheap, um, where you can actually create a force velocity profile from video. So um, GPS is the way that we do most of our force velocity profiling, but we started with laser. Okay? So individualizing this approach, both athletes run a 4.6540 here. Athlete A has a higher force and a lower velocity. And athlete B has a lower force and higher velocity. So typically looking at this, our outcome is we're looking at power. So how much power can they produce? So athlete A has a very high force and a lower velocity and produces higher power. And athlete B pr produces a little bit lower power further on. So in order to make both athletes better, we're gonna look at different approaches. Athlete A, would need to maintain their horizontal force component while actually increasing their velocity. So the program will look a little bit different. 
athlete B needs to maintain their velocity while increasing the horizontal force. So if we could have both of these athletes at 10 for horizontal force and 10 for velocity, we're looking at a very robust athlete. 